Okay, um, this is hidden game design mechanic number 76. Uh, once again, this talk is kind of the advanced tutorial talk based on the popular make your own mobile game in 60 minutes talk that's that was put on YouTube. Uh, the point of these more advanced game design mechanic talks or mini talks is to help give you a different perspective, help give you some of the game design mechanics that can help your game stand out from all the other games uh, in the mobile market. Once again, this talk is sponsored by chromacoders.org, a club dedicated to helping students make their own mobile games. So, hidden game design mechanic number 76 is about casual joystick control. So, what I'm going to do first is show you what some developers are actually implementing on mobile devices, which is pretty much implementing uh, a freeform joystick control similar to what you would see on the Xbox or PS3. And here's a little video showing you how that looks. Um, so as you can see, it's you know it's it's pretty complicated. Uh, there's a lot of movement. You need to play around with the buttons. You need to do all these other things. It just adds a lot of complexity. In fact, I played one of these types of games, not this game, but one of these types of games where there's a joystick control and a lot of buttons. I was just totally confused. Um, and, you know, the point of casual joystick control is to make a joystick control that is accessible to as many people as possible. This freeform joystick control is extremely difficult for most people to pick up very easily. And if the interface is so hard to pick up, they probably won't even spend the time to even learn about it so that they can get into the game itself. And so that's where a casual joystick control comes in. And pretty much what a casual joystick control is, does is it eliminates the actual freeform part of the joystick. And instead of like five or ten different buttons, they're just two buttons. And those two buttons um, allow for the player to just have a couple movements or a couple actions within the game. Um, the fact that it's two buttons means that they can just use you know, both thumbs, uh, one thumb to press one button, another thumb to press the other button, and it doesn't really get in the way of confusing the player. And so what's cool about these types of interfaces is that it's accessible from four to 104 years old. And so uh, here's an example of a game that actually used it. Um, it's the, like the funky chicken that thought he was a ninja. So let me play that right now and I'll show you exactly what's being done here. Okay. So as you can see, there's just two buttons, really simple. You know, and they, this game is pretty fun to play. They hit on the theme pretty well. You know, it's, it's about a chicken trying to be a ninja. It's kind of funny. Um, you know, once again, this is something that's totally accessible from four years old to 104 years old. Okay, so, so that's the point of these casual joystick controls. These joystick controls add a little more options. It kind of helps to vary the gameplay instead of just tapping the screen to jump. Now with these two type, you know, having two buttons, you can jump or duck, you know, and that, that adds a little mix or a little twist to that traditional side-scrolling gameplay that you see on mobile. Um, so uh, the next part is to actually implement this feature uh, to show you how to use it. Now, once again, we're going to use Corona to do this uh, because Corona just seems to be a very easy and effective way to focus on the game mechanics without having to worry about all the little programmatic or technical details. Um, so the code is, uh, you can download the code template for this mechanic at chromacoders.org slash gamemechanic76.zip. So go ahead and download that. And then what you want to do is extract it to your desktop. Okay, let me get that going. Okay, extract the casual dash uh, joystick folder to your desktop. And then uh, open up Corona. Now this time what I'm going to do is something a little different than before. Last time I usually uncommented out everything or commented out pretty much all the code and then we would walk through it step by step. I'm going to leave everything or I'm going to leave the code as normal and I'm just going to walk you through what's happening in the code. We'll see if this works better. If you like it better, make put something in the comments to let me know. Uh, if you feel that the other way of doing it was more effective, then let me know about that too. So uh, go to open, 
And what you want to do is go to the casual joystick folder uh, and then open up main.lua. And what you can see now is what I've done is I've taken that make your own mobile game in 60 minutes kind of monkey banana falling template and kind of revised it so that it has a casual joystick mechanic to it. Basically two buttons. One button is up and another button is down, which um, forces it down. So there you go. There's your, it's throwing bananas. You're just trying to catch the bananas. And the more you catch, uh, you can see your little score at the top. It goes up uh, the more you catch. Um, so really simple mechanic. You know, you can build off this mechanic. There's, there's in the code exchange on Corona, I think there's like side scroller code. So you can almost implement the uh, funky chicken that wanted to be an, a ninja type gameplay. Um, but either way, uh, let's walk through the code right now. So what we can do is go to file, go to main.lua and go to file um, open with text wrangler. You know, that's a free open source uh, text editor. Uh, and let's go to step one. So do a search for step one. And in step one, what we're doing is we're just going to create the sky, you know, that blue sky that you saw here. Um, and then we're going to create the ground. And after that, we're just going to create that first banana. And then we're going to create the monkey. Okay. And uh, we just create the left side and the right side. And then, of course, the score that we're going to keep in the top, you know, we're going to create a display.new text. So once again, just a few lines of code for each of those things in Corona. And, um, okay, now, additionally, we're going to create the button. And that's where we create a little group. And then we use the up button. You know, there's a little rectangle. And then we have the text for the up button right here. And then we also have a touch event listener so that when the player actually touches that up button, all we do is we take the monkey and we give it a linear velocity of neg negative 300 so that it jumps up. So when you do that, you hit the up, you know, Basically, that touch event listener is called, and it just gives it a linear velocity boost. Uh, you can play it around with that value however you want. And then, of course, we have the down button, which is, um, you know, to give it a velocity in the opposite direction. Once again, we add a touch event listener here. You see the down button, add event, touch list, uh, add event listener touch, and then the down button pressed function. And uh, we go to the down button press function once they've actually ended the press we'll just give it the linear velocity of 300 so that it goes down. And so when you go up, you can hit the down to go immediately down. So there you go, that's, um, that's part one. Um, now let's go to step two. In step two, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna enable the physics engine that Corona allows us to, uh, has. Uh, once again, just three lines of code, really simple. Corona makes it uh, super simple to do that. Um, and you can play around with the gravity. So if you ever want to change the theme, you know, use this code as a template for a theme of, say, playing this up-down game on the moon or Mars, because, you know, um, recently in the news, Mars, Curio you know, um, there's been a rover that's on the Mars exploring, stuff like that. Um, you can play around with this gravity value. Um, okay, so that's step two. Now let's go to step three. And in step three, all we're doing is, once again, we're going to add an event listener to call a function every on every frame because uh, that what we can do is then count every frame in every 40 frames, right? So that was step three. We're going to step four here. And if you go to step 4a, right, which is on frame that function from the enter frame add event listener that we just added, um, what we're going to do is we're going to keep count of the frame. And every 40 frames, we're just going to add another banana. We're going to throw another banana out. Um, we're going to set the linear velocity a certain speed. You know, we're going to give it a spin by changing the angular velocity. And then we're going to also give it a collision event so that whenever the banana, say, hits something or runs into something, say, potentially the monkey, we're going to call that on local collision function. And there we can process some of the game logic. So, for example, when the monkey hits the banana, we'll just inc increase the score by a factor of one or whatever else. Um, so that's um, 4b. Let's go to 4c. Okay, so for step 4c, what we're going to do is, um, these are just some of the variables to determine, um, you know, how many bananas we're going to throw before the game is over. Right now, we just set it to 30, um, but you can set it to whatever you want. The bananas eaten um, right there is just showing us how many we start out with. We've eaten zero bananas, so we set it to zero. Then we go to step 5, and step 5 is that on local collision function that I was just discussing. Um, 
And here what we do is we say, you know what, if the banana self.myName equals banana, um, and then the other object that it collides with is a monkey, you know, the monkey, then what we're going to do is we're going to increment the number of bananas eaten, and then we're going to update the score. So score.text equals that bananas eaten value. And uh, so let's just replay this. And so that's what's happening. So when the up, when the monkey collides with the banana, you'll notice that the score will go up because uh, it's calling that on local collision function. Now let's go to step six. In step six, this is just um, some stuff so that if you want, want to run it on the device, you can do that. Uh, it's this on system event thing. So say, for example, on Android, if you hit the home button, it'll just exit and then you can restart it and stuff like that. So there you go. Um, this is the code base. It's pretty simple, you know, set up up and down, but it adds a little more complexity to the gameplay, but not enough, not too much complexity so people can still get into the game. I think you can combine this mechanic with some of the other hidden game mechanics to make something compelling. For example, combine this mechanic with the theme mechanic. You know, I mentioned um, the Mars rover, you know, Mars rover, that's kind of a recent thing, or, you know, other planets, whatever else. So you can use that as a theme you know, have maybe a side scroller or even this up down thing where you're trying to catch whatever dust on Mars or whatever else it is on Mars. Um, and you can kind of make an interesting game that uh, adds a little more a twist to what most people are seeing in terms of physics games on mobile devices. But at the same time, it's simple enough where pretty much anyone can pick it up. So uh, let's, uh, okay, so there you go. Um, so once again, that's hidden game design mechanic number 76. It's the casual joystick control. Um, it's much more beneficial than the freeform joystick. Freeform joystick seems to be very complicated. Casual joystick adds just you know one or two buttons so you can use um, a finger from both hands uh, to potentially add just a little twist to complexity but not, not too much. Um, and then once again, you can have the code base to implement your version of this at chromacoders.org slash gamemechanics76.zip. Thanks again. Uh, take care.